Sergius first asked me to go to Gnome, my first instinct was, why Gnome? I know they have muskox, but what else does Gnome really have to offer? And are muskox even worth going out there for? For those who don't know anything about Gnome, here's some quick info. Gnome is up in northwest Alaska on the Seward Peninsula. The Seward Peninsula lies on the Bering Sea, part of the Pacific Ocean, and the only way to get access to Gnome is by boat or plane, but if you're brave enough, you can take a dog team there just like the Iditarod. Gnome has roads, but you can't drive there. And if that doesn't sound remote enough for you, we're camping all four days we're there. I've realized life is too short to not do epic trips like these. So to make this even more fun, we're gonna be a group of four friends eager to photograph wildlife such as muskox and a world-class bird migration. So I'm in my hometown now, Kodiak, Alaska, and tomorrow we head out to Nome. But for now, today's May 26th, Crab Fest just started, so I'm gonna take you there, show you some of the food that they have, and then we'll catch the flight to Nome. All right, that was all I get of the Kodiak Crab Fest this year. And tomorrow morning, we hop on the flight to Nome, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Made it to Nome, it's been a long day, woke up at 4.30, but we're here waiting to hitch a ride. I got... Hey, I'm Joey. Big bird photographer, right? Eh, I, I mean, I, I try to try to shoot some birds, not yeah. with a gun. We're waiting for Sergius and his brother Herman to pick us up. It's been about 16 hours and I think he left us. Getting called out. This is what it looks like at midnight here. Actually, it's 1 p.m. Waiting for the day to start, so. Yeah, we, we are uh, hoping it happens in just uh, at least the next couple hours. That'd be good if we get out. Yeah. Now I'm starting to get hungry. Listen, Joe, Joey walked away for a minute, but I met him like five minutes ago, and he's already whipping his out and showing me how big it is. So uh, here's my uh, camera setup. I've got the 5D Mark IV and the 100-400 lens on. Or sorry, just 400 prime. Oh! Well, he had... <laughs> he, he had my word. He had the camera on. That is not good. Because that is the sort of thing that happens to me Dude, literally all the time. Dude, we were just talking about that. All the time. Yeah. It's so funny. That one of the first things he says to me is, Oh, I like your camera cage. I kind of need one because I drop my camera a lot. Literally two seconds in, drops his camera. Why don't you make sure that lens works and just take a quick portrait of me real quick? Shouldn't be a, shouldn't good. Be a problem. Sounds good. That should maybe a little further. Let's see right here. That's good. Nice. There's Chris right there. Bam. Oh my god, that's actually a nice shot. I will buy that photo from you for 50 bucks. They've arrived. How long were you guys waiting? Just 17 hours. I am Herman, mostly known as the brother of Sergius, the great Alaskan photographer. And I'm here to watch photographers and videographers do their job and uh, reap the benefits of their connections and knowledge. So you're not a photographer? I do not take pictures professionally or as an amateur. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I use my binoculars to identify species and enjoy their behaviors. Hey, I'm Sergius Hannon and I am a nature photographer, obviously here with Chris. This is my first time in Nome, super stoked to be here. 
Uh, I grew up in Homer, but surprisingly, I still haven't seen that much of Alaska. I'm excited to be out here doing photography. It's a beautiful place. Tell me which world this makes sense. Gas is 4.49 here. It's 5.17 in Kodiak. You know how much I just paid for a case of water? 49.99. Watch it. How's that even possible? Gas is cheaper than water. This is pretty cool. Check check out this church here. First, we grab a bite to eat at Pingo and then begin our journey on the first of three roads in Nome, the Taylor Highway. It doesn't take long for Joey to be on the ground with the birds, and within minutes, we encounter our first ever Nome muskox. Also known as Beam Road to this place, Salmon Lake. Really, really pretty drive. Absolutely wonderful. Remind me of the Denali Highway. Great for you birders out there. A lot of birds on this. We saw some epic stuff. Check out this little cabin over here. That's where we'll be staying tonight. Actually, we're not, but it's probably not too bad. We're gonna set up the camping stuff and let's get that done. I'm a little disappointed. I could have sworn Sergi said that me and him are personally going to be sharing a tent, but turns out that information is false. We all have our own tent. So, that's exciting. It's actually pretty pretty nice in here. I thought it would be kind of cheap and air unfriendly and I'd get cold, but one second in here I'm already kind of warm. So, looking forward to this. This was a nice little pop-up tent that Sergi is um, is letting me borrow for this trip. I'm not a camper. I really don't have much camping gear. My friend Scott White let me use all of his stuff. I really only had to bring my video camera gear. Everything's set up now. Sergius is starting to cook up some food here, so let's go ahead and get that going. This is midnight in Nome, Alaska at the end of May. Although plenty of daylight left, we were drained and decided to get some rest for the council road trip in the morning. Well, it's the next morning and we're uh, tired. Somebody woke me up at four in the morning because they were cold and then decided to chase a blue throat for about 16 days. Did you get a good photo of it? Uh, I got an ID shot. I just battled with this tent right here, this uh, pop-up tent that Sergio just let me borrow. Yeah, never again. I can't figure out how to fold it into the package size. We got it to a circle, but that's about it. In all seriousness, it was a pretty rough night. It did get down to 34 degrees. The sleeping bag I had was rated for 17 degrees. You always gotta go way colder than you think. I feel bad for Joey here. Joey, come here. What was your sleeping bag rated for, like 65? I think it's like 30, and I had plenty of clothing on, so I wasn't like freezing, but I was cold. 
and it was m making it so that I wasn't really getting a lot of sleep. Plus, we had like ptarmigan calling all night. Yeah, the, the birds were loud. Uh, it didn't get dark enough. It was still like two o'clock in the morning, super, super bright out. Okay. You hear these birds? Just keep you up. The, the fact that we had the car was kind of handy. Yeah, so I think tonight we're gonna end up sleeping in the car. To me, like if you go to Alaska, if it's not July, you gotta pack warm, just in case. One of the more frustrating or challenging things about this trip is I didn't realize we'd see any owls and we've seen a bunch of short ear owls and they're one of my favorite animals to photograph just because of how elusive they are for me. I can never get photos of them and they've just been haunting me this whole trip. They just are like a mile away. They don't come close. This was the closest one we got. None of my photos were usable um but really it gets kind of frustrating when you don't get something but hopefully something will happen we'll get a little reward what do you think sergius i bet we'll have better luck there we're gonna get a good shot aren't we absolutely absolutely all right well that concludes the first road beam road really good for you birders out there like i said earlier uh when you first enter it's just, it's just this dirt road the whole time but there's a little sign here we went to salmon lake we didn't uh we didn't go as far as you can, but there are some more birding opportunities back there. Uh, we started late yesterday, so that's why we didn't go too far. Today, we're gonna hit up Council Road. Let's see what that looks like. But first, we gotta get some coffee. It didn't take more than five minutes of being on the Nome Council Road before encountering our first group of muskox. Currently in May, muskox can be aggressive when their calves are around, so pushing up can have risks and rewards. It's vital you understand the body language of a herd. This is crazy. Man, that sound they make. Yeah, it is. You just walk around the thick brush, trying to shed this stuff. Can you show me? I'm not kind of up close. Muskox fur. I have to buy a new drone. It it's broken. Right here, the flattest part of Alaska, Nome. I happened to crash my drone. On what? Well, we're not gonna talk about oh, that. No, no. I'm setting my drone up because it's literally Alaska. Road was really unique. It started off with some really epic coastal landscapes going through these little small areas. I don't want to say towns, but a lot of cabins on these beaches. You're on this little aisle of land and then you just kind of drive through it. I was really, really impressed with this road. And then you come up into the mountains. But what the craziest thing is, you didn't even have to come out this far to experience muskox. I couldn't even get the drone up get footage of anything and we saw muskox before we even got two miles into the road which is really cool i didn't think i would enjoy it this much but it's pretty epic while herman takes a much needed nap we find out while sergius is the man behind the food the whole time joey just might be the reason wildfires exist
crazy is this, guys? We are photographing some muskox right now, and I just witnessed with my friends here this mom and calf climbing up this mountain. Perfect silhouette shot. I could not believe it. It is midnight right now, and if you point the camera this way, you can see this beautiful light. The sun is still shining really bright. It's probably got another hour, but you can see these muskox down here. Do you zoom in? There's still some coming up. They're gonna be coming up over this cliff to get across the street. I guess they sleep over on that hill or something tonight. So absolutely epic day. I couldn't believe all the birds and the muskox that we saw. Council Road was an absolute beauty. I couldn't get over some of the things we saw. I was jumping for joy as we ended today's journey. Today we start the Gnome Teller Road and once again see muskox right away. Let's see what else today's Teller Road brings us. Close your eyes, hear the voice within, call it this heavy load got under your skin. Got the white knuckles holding on a tie, keeping your feelings bottled up inside. Heading for a collision in the night. To really live, you gotta die. Breathe in, breathe out. Hey, come, come, come alive. Breathe in, breathe out. We just saw one of the most rare animals you can see in all of the world. Wolverine was just running right up here. How crazy was that? They move so quick, so fluid. It's absolutely the craziest thing that I've seen. Look at this epic spot along the Gnome Teller Highway. It's been an absolute beautiful drive. It's been pretty warm. I know I'm wearing the red jacket now, but we took a little nap out in the open. Felt really good until cars rode by and dust got in our mouth. Really, really beautiful. Could be a really nice golden glow. One thing you have to think about out here is even though it's end of May, still somewhat cold, a lot of heat distortion in your photos. So you really wanna be careful with that. A lot of times a muskox is only 50 feet away and there's still a good amount of quality loss due to the heat distortion. Be careful and uh, Let's keep going. Look at Joey could mean look at him in the car, look Would at the look mountain. At that? Climb too. Would you look at that? <laughs> Would you look at that? <laughs> you know, people in the lower 48 say their town has the worst potholes of all time. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm six feet tall. <laughs> Probably the coolest town that we have seen yet. This is Teller, Alaska. The end of the Teller Highway, obviously. We're standing on this beautiful spit here. There's another town across the street. Well, it has a name. I don't know what it is. That's actually Russia right there. Crazy. No, just kidding. It's not. Or is it? Let's walk off and check out this dead seal.
That's pretty unique looking. I'm just absolutely impressed with this area. I think by far, this might be my favorite, prettiest coastal town. I love Homer, I love Kodiak, I love Valdez, I love Seward, they're great. But this uniqueness out here, knowing you're just at the edge of the Bering Sea, nothing out there besides Russia, which is like 55 miles away from the end of that mountain range. It's really cool to know how remote you really are. I just, I think it's absolutely crazy. They think they're so cool. It was our final morning and our final look at these majestic beasts up here in the great northwestern area of Nome, Alaska on the Seward Peninsula. Let's get some final thoughts from Joey, Sergis, and Herman. I'm asking you two questions here. All right. Favorite road and also your favorite moment that I didn't record. The Taylor we stopped like every three minutes for a stretch for, for a long time. That was pretty fantastic. And then Council, I can't remember what we saw in Council. Council was the big muskox day. It's hard to separate them. I think scenery wise, I think Teller definitely takes the cake. Those magnificent vistas, valleys, gentle mountain slopes. And then just as far as the experience, honestly, I think the first day on Taylor was just, it was just so exciting. We just saw so much so quickly and we didn't get out there until like, what, four o'clock? Right, because we waited yeah. three hours for for uh, some chowder. So, yeah, I would I would go with I would go with Taylor. Favorite moment that was unrecorded was when we were pulling up. Uh, I think it was on it was on uh, Teller, right? On Teller, and uh, we thought we saw something. There was a truck stopped, and we're like, oh, you know, maybe they see something interesting, like a bear or something big. And so uh, we don't see anything though. And it, we, it looks like they're glassing way off into the distance. So we pull up in front of them we're like, what do you guys see? And the second we pull up in front of them, Sir just spots a, uh, what was it, a rock? Rock ptarmigan. And we're like, did you guys see that ptarmigan? Are you guys looking at that ptarmigan there? Are we blocking it? And they're like, uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it was just uh, very awkward. And that was my moment. I've been laughing about it ever since. He parked the truck right in their lens. <laughs> Favorite road is definitely yesterday's Teller Road and this morning's Teller Road. Just uh, a lot of cool mammals. The red foxes we saw close to sunset were pretty awesome. We accidentally cut these two foxes off from one another and then one was stuck up on a hill and started calling. It was just really beautiful light kind of an albino looking fox, it was really beautiful. Obviously the wolverine that we saw just made that whole trip, so definitely the Teller Highway. And then favorite moment, not caught on camera, was probably moment when, uh, when I started complaining about my glasses, how they weren't working very well, blurred up on the left eye, and uh, I thought it was just like, woke up on the wrong side of the bed or something, and then Chris has been looking for his glasses all day, all morning, so. Eventually he's like, Sergius, are you wearing your my glasses? <laughs> it's like, oh my God. <laughs> I left my glasses in my tent. I've been wearing Chris's glasses the whole time, so. My favorite road that we went on on this trip was definitely the Teller Highway. Uh, when we got to the end, we hit the town of Teller, which was just such a cool town to see. Uh, there were a lot of fallow ropes that were hanging out at the end there. I got some sweet shots of them. So I was a huge fan of that road. We also had the Wolverine there, so it was definitely a highlight of the trip. And as for me, I loved every moment of this trip. I think everyone should experience some kind of remote getaway with their friends in a beautiful place like Nome. It's great for the soul in this crazy world that we're living today. If you like this video, I suggest you check out this Katmai National Park brown bear video. You guys are gonna love it. And that's all I got. I'm gonna leave you guys with a bunch of photos from this trip 
and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Hit subscribe, and uh, that's it. Bye.